All right, so the very last thing for us to go over is now how are we going to apply and use these significant figures in calculations? Because I told you that significant figure rules would tell you where to round on your calculations and where you should stop with your decimal points and your digits. Um, but all we've talked about so far is how to count sig figs. It has nothing to do with actually calculating with them, okay? So the tricky thing about this is that multiplication and division and addition and subtraction have different rules for sig figs. So you need to be able to look at a problem and say, okay, this is a multiplication problem and think of this rule. You need to be able to look at a problem and say, okay, this is addition and subtraction. I need to use this rule. Or you need to be able to think of both in the same problem. Oh, I started by adding and subtracting these things together. So I use this rule first. And then after that, I multiply, then I use this rule, okay? So these are very, very important, okay? So the rule for multiplication and division is the number with the least number of significant figures limits the significant figures of the answer. So as an example, 3.49 times 5.1. Least number of sig figs limits the sig figs in the answer. This number has one, two, three sig figs. This number, 5.1, has two sig figs. Let's go ahead and write sig figs out a little so that we know what those numbers mean. The rule is that the number with the least number of sig figs will determine the sig figs of the answer. So if you were to just put 3.49 times 5.1 into your calculator, you'd get something along the lines of 17.799 and such. But you know that since this number only had two sig figs in it, this number, your final answer, can also only have two sig figs in it. So I shouldn't have gone out to all of these decimal places. I need to end my answer with two sig figs. So I've got to say, all right, well, I need this digit, right? That's my first one. And then I need this digit. And then you've got to use your basic rules of math rounding, okay? We go with the standard 0.5 and above, round up, okay? So if I go to my next digit, it's a 7. So I'm going to round this one up. So it's not going to be 17. It's going to be 18. And this answer has two sig figs in it, which is what we wanted, okay? So some people have trouble with rounding. My advice is to just start from left to right, and when you get to the last digit that you're allowed to have, look one past it and think, do I round up or stay the same, okay? Addition and subtraction has a completely different rule. And that's why these are so confusing for people sometimes is because they want to automatically look at every calculation and just count sig figs on it. But the thing about adding and subtracting is that it doesn't use sig figs at all. It just says the number with the smallest number of decimal places limits the decimal places of the answer. So if I look at my three things I'm adding here, I have 2.41, which, which goes two digits past the decimal point, 3.2, which goes one past the decimal point, 4.579, which goes three past the decimal point. Therefore, one of these numbers, this one, is going to limit us because it goes the least digits past that decimal point. It only goes one where this one goes two and this one goes three. That means that my answer, whatever it might be after I put it in the calculator, it's actually 10.189. This number, I need to round to only one digit past the decimal point. So I'm going to leave my 10. That is unchanged. But then I have to say, okay, this 1, is that going to round up to a 2? Well, this is an 8, so yes, it would round up, and this would become 10.2. So I didn't have to count sig figs at all, okay? So some people like adding and subtracting rules for that reason, because they don't like sig fig rules. But unfortunately, a lot of what we do in this class is multiplication and division. So it is important. 
And this is just a reminder on rounding rules. Like I said, if it's five or greater, round up, otherwise round down. So if you wanted to um, take this one to three sig figs, like I said, start from the left and go to the right. I know that I'm gonna have a four and a point and a five. My last digit is gonna be my last sig fig I'm allowed. So four, five, I'm looking at this seven. Next to it is a three. So am I gonna round up to eight or keep it as a seven? I'm gonna leave it as a seven. Okay. Then this one right here to two sig figs. This is a little bit trickier because we've got all those fancy zeros in there, right? Think back, are leading zeros significant? No, they're not. So none of these count. None of these zeros even count towards my sig figs. I start right here. So my three is significant. My next digit, oops, I'm sorry. You can't just write the three. Oh, I just did a very common mistake. What a great thing to talk about. Can I just go through and say that 0 0.003089 is equivalent to 31? No, I can't. So even though those zeros are not significant, okay, you still have to write them. They're still your placeholders, okay? So that was totally my bad. Um, so you want 0, 0.00, then your three. I've only put one sig fig down though. And then I have this zero and an eight next to it. So I'm gonna round up, the zero becomes a one, okay? So you can kind of look at this and say, all right, well, this number is the same as this number. It's just rounded a little bit more. It has two sig figs instead of four, okay? Um, so now, uh, we are gonna go through and do four kind of practice problems. You'll notice that I have pretty much one of each operation and also threw some scientific notation in there, okay? So I want you to go ahead and try these out. Put them in your calculator first to see what your big unrounded decimal is. Then go through and think about your sig fig rules and you're gonna have a combination, some of each, and round your final answer. Okay, so pause the video and really try this on your own. Do not let it just play through. So after putting these in my calculator and going out a little ways, these are the decimals that I ended up with. Um, so this first question is a division problem. In multiplication and division, the rule is least number of sig figs goes. So this number right here has one, two, three sig figs in it. This number right here has one, two, three, four, five, six sig figs in it. That means that my answer should only have three sig figs. Are these zeros significant? No, they don't count, but do I have to write them? Yes. So I need both of these zeros, but then I need an eight, that's one, a four, that's two, and my very last one, will it stay a three or round up? A two is next to it, so it'll stay a three. All right, this one right here is multiplication, okay? This number times this number in your calculator is 1,809.6. Think to yourself, did I convert this out of scientific notation in order to put it in my calculator? If you did, I understand. Sometimes, especially on your iPad calculators, this is not fun <laughs> to put in, okay? But I'm telling you straight up right now, like I said, you do not want to be working with calculations later on in the year with 23 zeros in them, okay? You're gonna mess it up and your answer is gonna be wrong. So get used to, on your calculator app that you choose to use, how to input scientific notation correctly. And if you're not sure if you're doing it right, take a second and plug this in and see if you get this answer. I'm telling you it's right, okay? So. Looking at this, this is one, two, three sig figs. Uh, this right here is one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven sig figs. Are all of these digits significant? That's the big question. How many sig figs are in this answer? Is this 10 significant? Is this three significant? The answer is no, okay? Because if you think about what these really are, they're just zeros. Okay. If I were to write this number out of scientific notation, it would just be one, two, four, eight. One, two, four, eight. 
okay? Are there any like zeros or anything out here that I need to count, any decimal places? No. This right here is just telling you how big or how small, but it's never gonna add anything significant to your numbers. The only thing that will ever be significant is out here in front. So this has four sig figs. This has three sig figs. That means your answer, because it's multiplication, should have three sig figs. So I need to round this. I've got a one, I've got an eight. My last, my next digit is my last digit. This nine has, or sorry, this zero has a nine next to it. So it's definitely gonna round up. But is the right answer 181? Is 181 a number anywhere close to 1,809.6? No. When you cut off at your sig figs, you've still got to add those trailing zeros on there to hold your decimal point where it should be. This zero is not significant, right? We know it's a trailing zero and we did not include a decimal place here. But without that zero, this number is completely different, right? So it's 1,810 as your final answer. Now these ones are easier because this goes to the hundredths place, this goes to, this doesn't even go past the decimal place. Um, and this number right here um, goes to, and you know what, I keep forgetting to do this on my worksheets. This problem right here should have a decimal on it. Please, please, please put a decimal onto this period right here if I forget to change it before I give you this to work on yourself. Um, so I have 4.32, I have 500, and I have 20.4. That means that my last, or sorry, my fewest decimal places ends here with no decimal places essentially, which means I'm gonna have 520, and then I'm gonna stop at my ones place um, I should have four and there's a seven right here. So it'll round up and be 525 and that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. We needed that decimal point here. Otherwise we didn't know if these zeros were significant. This could, we could have to go all the way out to the hundredths place and then it would just be 500 as your answer, which is pretty, pretty weird to think about. But later on we'll, we'll talk about some crazy examples like that. Okay. So this last one is 63.5 minus 0 0.045. Um, this goes to the um, ones place, tens place, I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that, tens place. This goes to the thousandths place. Um, that means that your answer is going to end at the tenths place right here. So it's gonna be 63 point and then I get one more digit. It's a four with a five next to it, so it's gonna round up to a five. Okay, so that's everything you need to know about sig figs, okay? The, these are the rules that you have to know so that anytime you do a calculation, ever, no matter how big it is, no matter how small it is, you know exactly how far you need to round, okay? And everyone will be expected to follow sig figs for the rest of the year, okay? So you really, really need to make sure that you learn this and take the practice problems that I give you very seriously.